All right, so this will be the last part of uh, the Truss uh, movies. Now realize that everything that we've done here, um, we're, we have three uh, parameters that we're controlling. Depth of truss, um, our minimum depth, maximum depth, uh, number of web members, and then we're also controlling um, how the depth is being utilized, how it's being graphed across the, uh, the truss itself. And to feed the information, it's all coming from just a series of lines. So as long as you have things that are broken up and do just simple curves, um, in this case it's, it's lines, but as long as it's simple curves, uh, this should all work. And, and then we get our top cord, our web member, and our bottom cord. And if you need to visualize it further, you can start to pipe. Now, anytime that you start piping uh, something in Rhino and or Grasshopper, you start to add a lot of information for the processor to keep up with. So you'll see that your, um, your processing times uh, go uh, way up. And so you may want to pipe or you may not want to, depending on how many uh, elements you have going on. But let's just say that I'm, I'm I want to do this, so I'm going to just add uh, a radius to the pipe so I can control its size. And maybe that radius will also be used for both bottom and top cords. And then I'm going to add a separate radius. So this is for And this will be for my web members. And I'll just turn that way down. Okay. So now I can see a more clear visual, perhaps, of what, what it is I'm doing. Now, as soon as I start to uh, mess with this, if I want to get this geometry into Rhino, uh, I'm just going to simply uh, select all of them, hit the space bar, and it will give me this compass that allows me to you know, uh, disable preview or enable it. But also I can uh, enable or disable the actual component. But I can all, and then the last thing, well I can do a lot of things, but this is what I'm going to do right now, is I'm going to bake uh, the information which essentially puts it from a uh, grasshopper preview into a uh, geometry that is in Rhino. So now it becomes uh, physical. Now it's no longer, it can only be uh, manipulated in Rhino now. And you also may want to think about capping the pipe. So let me just undo this and go back into grasshopper and I'm going to give it an end. So I'm going to get each one of these a number. One. And number one should allow it to be a flat uh, cap, essentially. All right, we'll bake that. All right, so when you close a uh, grasshopper, um, some other conventions that you should know about is that you need to uh, actually save a separate grasshopper file for each thing that you're doing. So in this case I'm going to call this uh, trusses and so now I have a separate file in grasshopper but I also then have a a file perhaps that I would name uh, similarly in, uh, in Rhino. And so I'm calling them the exact same thing. And that, that allows me to know um, allows me to uh, keep an eye on and, and keep it straight. Um, those things that uh, 
are in, are tied together. So I have my rhino file that has a series of geometry that I might be targeting, and then I have the grasshopper file that's actually using that geometry. So so now I'll know that to open up uh, trusses O2 trusses in Rhino and then open up O2 trusses in Grasshopper, and those two things will be linked, uh, as it were. Uh, I could always uh, just open up a fresh uh, Rhino file and just target different geometry or create, you know, different geometry to, for it to feed. Uh, but now I have them kind of uh, linked in a way. Uh, that is uh, easy for me to find later. All right, so that's the pipe. That's how you get things geometry into Rhino. So I'm just going to disable these because it really does slow down the processor. And uh, in fact, I'm going to get rid of the geometry. And I'm going to show you one more uh, trick. Uh, well, it actually, it's just an explanation of kind of what I'm doing. You know, again, uh, I'm just given a set of curves. So I could either draw a bunch of lines in Rhino and give it to uh, target here, and it'll do the same thing. Or I can just create more curves in Grasshopper, more complexities. So let's just say that I wanted to create a, a grid. And this grid would have uh, all these trusses. So to do that, I get this uh, grid component, which has um, size of grid cell, uh, extent of the X grid and the extent of the Y grid. So I'm just going to feed it a few sliders. So the size, let's say, is 20. And the extents. And when you're experimenting, it's always best to keep the number of things you're working with down to a minimum until you know that the script works. Uh, so if you do something wrong, essentially uh, you won't have to pay the price of this kind of freezing up because it's trying to calculate 200,000 things. It will um, show you that something's wrong, you can fix it, and then you can feed it the 300,000 things uh, and you won't pay the price. So I'm just going to get this down to two things. And I'm going to break this connection. And to do that, I'm going to hold down the control key and you can see it turns this red arrow uh, and minus sign and that will break the connection so now the curve set only has the original curves it was targeting so I'm actually even going to uh, try to disconnect all of that so it's empty oh, I disconnected on the other side alright, I'll just have to deal with the fact I can maybe delete these lines all right, now it's doing nothing. All right, so let's take a look at what the grid has. I'm going to put a panel. And the grid allows you to, it says it has two rectangles. I'm going to make this one three. So it has two rectangles. One, two, one, two. And then two more, two more here. And then a third set, there's the three. So it has a, a kind of a list structure that's two in each, three lists long. So if I increase this by 4, you can see we added one to the grid and we also added that. If I increase this here to like 3, then you, you can see that each list gets three things, not two. So that's how the structure works. And what I'd really like it to do is I want it to um, say uh, create a truss for each side maybe alright so to do that I'm just going to simply explode I can do it here I can grab under curves under utility grab the explode and we're going to explode each of these uh, rectangles and you'll see that the explode gives you two things it gives me segments which as you can imagine is each rectangle broken up into its four curves so one two three four curves and then also it gives me the vertices that make up each um, each rectangle. So we have a start point, then the next point, the third point, the fourth point, and then it actually duplicates the last one because then it ends. So it goes from here to there to there to there and then it finishes. So we actually get five points, not, not four as we might expect. 
So if we just plug that in, we'll see that we get um, the, the, the kind of structure. We get this kind of strange thing because we have kind of a repeat because remember that that line is on this cell but it's also inscribed in that cell. So I don't know, that may or may not be kind of uh, great. But what I can do is I can start to analyze the cells and maybe create a separate structure uh, that's kind of unique to each cell. So uh, again, you're only limited by your imagination in Grasshopper. So it's just geometry. You're just learning how to um, how to kind of deal with it as a complexity, but also deal with it in kind of an imaginative way. So if I really wanted to create a, a cell structure that was more like tied, almost like um, to the center of the cell and then branched out to the edges, I would simply go up here to analysis of the curve and look for something that had uh, a center, right? So maybe that one of these gives me uh, a center. It looks like they all, in some fashion, gives me a center. So that would be one way of doing it. The other way of doing it would be using what's called area. And as long as the area, it's a, um, a coplanar rectangle, meaning that it's flat. It's like not one of the corners is kind of up in space. Um, I can also use this. So that's going to also give me the same kind of information. So one of these two might work. Uh, I'll go ahead and maybe use this one or that one. And uh, hey, we'll just use the area. And now I'm going to just draw lines. I'm going to draw lines from each of these vertices or, uh, to the center point. So I need to use this other piece of information, which is this. So those are the points uh, of the grid, uh, but actually what I want is the explode. I want to explode these curves, and I want their vertices, so I want this right here. And I showed it to you earlier, remember? And it has five points. I really just wanted it down to four. So I'm going to teach you another uh, bit of information, which is the call. We used call pattern before, but now we're going to use the call index. The index is basically this list here. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's the index that tells you where in the list your item is. So if I wanted uh, to focus on this one, it would be 0 this one is one. So it's really about its location within the list, right? Uh, the beginning or at the end. So I'm going to give it the list and then I'm going to give it a number. And in this case, because zero is the same as four, I'm just going to always tell it zero. And the reason I want to give it zero is that I'd never know. Maybe this grid is a bunch of triangles and if I give it four, if it's triangles, then it would only be three. I would want to get rid of. So so I'm just going to give it zero because it's always zero. The first one will be one that I'll get rid of and, and then it'll be fine. So now we look at it and we can see that it only goes to four items. Alright, so now we just draw the lines. Once again, we go from say the center to this. Almost worked. Really close. You can see that, uh, in fact, there's a kind of gobbledygook. Well, let's take a look at the list. This is the other big part, and as you know, I've gone into like this is the fourth movie. Um, things get uh, more and more complex. And so let's just see what's going on. So I have, uh, in this case, I have center points for three items. So say that three, one, two, three and then the next one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then here I have a set of lines. All right, no, let's go here. Here I have a set of one, two, three, four um, uh, uh, 
vertices, one, two, three, four vertices. So these two pieces of information are not set up correctly because really what I wanted to do is feed this, this only that one to this set and only the next one to the next set and so on and so forth. So I really want to feed it in a different way than I'm seeing here. So one thing that I can do is I can start to uh, graft this information again. I'm just going to add the graft and so now it'll send separate pieces for each one. So now I have my tree set up correctly and I'm going to add this to my line. And now I have something more like a, a field of a uh, tr truss structure. Alright, so let's just imagine that instead of a truss, that these were actually um, kind of uh, fins of something. Well, that's pretty easy to do. I'm just going to start lofting just this one to this one and I can get rid of that. Alright, so let's imagine that this uh, looks different. So I'm going to use a graph thing. Uh, let's try the Bezier right here, or the Conic, one of those two. So now you can see that I've started to give this uh, a lot more um, tectonic as far as a, a field of um, structural kind of fins. You know, I could of course go back to kind of the truss structure, but it all depends on kind of what the nature of uh, the beast. You know, this would not make a very uh, clever uh, truss. It's very inefficient in that sense. So it really depends on what, what you're going for. So I started to suddenly imagine that this was actually a field of, of, of structural columns. You know, or, um, or I could change the orientation of my grid and start to think of this as some kind of uh, clever uh, curtain wall standoff. So here the grid is in the XY plane, and if I simply change it to uh, the, uh, say, the XZ plane, it almost works. I'll just have to switch over here to make sure that the Z, see this is where I, I went a little awry by giving it um, an absolute direction. Maybe give it the Y, and this suddenly is uh, in a different type of uh, extension. Pretty cool. All right, guys. Um, I know I didn't kind of end on trusses. I kind of ended on something else. But it's all about logic. Um, how are you? you utilize kind of the base geometry and the jig that you've created for it 
and then and then feeding it the proper geometry later uh, to get at the idea. So it's all about kind of controlling the geometry and controlling the list of information. All right.